My husband of 20 years slid into our son's 18-year-old girlfriend's DMs. But now I just found out that's not the only thing he's been sliding into. I, 41 female, am a stay-at-home mom. And my husband, 48 male, who I'll call Paul, works in finance. We have been married for nearly 20 years. We have two kids, Eric, our 18-year-old son, currently a senior in high school, and Mary, our 15-year-old daughter. They are both the lights of my life. My marriage with my husband has grown somewhat stale over the years for a myriad of reasons such as his work schedule and how I've aged poorly since we first met. Our son Eric has a girlfriend, 18 female, whom he's been dating since they were freshmen in high school. We'll call her Emily. Eric absolutely adores Emily. She's his first love, and she's someone I've always considered as family. This makes the whole situation that much more excruciating for me. Last week, I inadvertently saw my husband's phone screen and got a glimpse of a text thread between my husband and Emily and I read what looked like a message of her telling him that she misses touching his manhood. I froze in place in complete disbelief. I spent most of the day convincing myself that I must have misread what I saw. However, I didn't misread it because over the last several days, I discovered a folder on his computer filled with tons of inappropriate, intimate images. He clearly has a porn addiction. He also has saved photos of Emily from her Instagram on his computer. Although they weren't inappropriate, she was fully clothed. It was still the proof I needed to confirm that I wasn't going crazy. I also looked at his phone during opportune moments and saw more of their interactions. I wish I had never looked. They were filled with mean, horrible things said at my expense, with him constantly comparing me to her. He would call me fat and old, among other things, with Emily giving laughing emojis. I've always had hunches or paranoid feelings that Paul has been cheating on me, but never in a million years could I have fathomed something like this. Last month, I found an intimate women's clothing in our bedroom that I know wasn't mine. I turned a blind eye to it being naive and acting like it was maybe our daughters, even though that made zero sense. Not only is he cheating on me, but he's betraying our son. I'm completely devastated. I don't even think words can adequately describe the dread, anger, and shock I feel right now. I'm totally overwhelmed on how to handle this because obviously action needs to be taken, but I'm terrified of what kind of psychic blow this will be for my son. I have no idea how to even broach this completely messed up topic with him. I wouldn't wish this predicament on my worst enemy. I can't even believe I married this scumbag in the first place. And then my mind started to race, realizing that I started noticing specifically unusual behavior from him around the same time Emily turned 18. Was he waiting for her to turn 18 before pursuing this affair? There are so many layers to all of this, and I'm completely paralyzed with fear and dread about it all. None of it makes any sense. How did this happen? Am I that much of a stupid idiot that I let all of this happen under my watch? Eric adores Emily, and the thought of revealing the sickening truth to him terrifies me. The impact on his young heart and mind could be devastating. My heart aches for Eric and Mary, who are completely innocent bystanders. I haven't confronted my husband about this because I'm frankly scared of the domino effect. I don't know who to turn to first about this. Update. My brother connected me to a very tough junkyard dog type lawyer. I saved screenshots of all his conversations with Emily, but I was only able to get the last three months from iCloud. The conversations were mostly flirty and dirty talk. It was hard to stomach, completely sleazy, and I saw several negative things said about me. His call history showed he talks with her for hours pretty consistently. He is also on the dating apps. I took screenshots of his profiles and all of the active chats he has with his matches. It's very clear he uses a filter to seek out girls who are 18 to 22 or so. I copied all of his files from the computer. He goes on intimate chat rooms and forums, and he spends a ton of money on purchasing adult content. I rummaged through every possible hiding spot I could think of in the house. He had various toys, blindfolds, cuffs, lubricants, etc. He also had different outfits, which looked kind of like a girl's Catholic school uniform and a French maid type outfit too. I picked up Eric and Mary from school, and we all drove to my brothers. They were able to sense something was awry when I picked them up. I delicately told them the entire situation, and I broke down crying. Mary had the most anger, even more than Eric. I met with Emily's mother and told her everything. She confiscated Emily's phone and gave me the entire chat log. It only dated back three months ago, like on my husband's iCloud, almost as if they both deleted the messages at the same time. She told me Emily sobbed when confronted. 
Emily basically told her mother that she would never understand and that she and him were in love. I don't want to get into too many details about what else she was saying, but suffice to say it's very easy to assume that my husband slowly and methodically became a sage-like figure in her life, making her feel she could rely on him. And he took advantage of the fact that she came from a broken home. Emily is also non-stop insistent that their friendship only became romantic and physical recently. And before that, she said he was more of a friend and mentor. I confronted Paul over over Zoom. The look on his face was scary. He became red and looked so sweaty he had anger and panic in his eyes. His tone of voice was very defensive and frightening. He kept yelling the word context over and over again and that none of that happened. He was unable to speak without constant stutters and intensity. Nothing really made any sense to me. I refused to tell him where I was and he said I had no right to take his kids away from him and then he abruptly left to Zoom. My lawyer is filing for temporary sole custody of Mary and a restraining order. Mary is still the most angry. She's totally furious with her dad and Emily. Justifiably so, of course. Mary is recollecting moments in time she watched her dad interact with her friends, and she's in knots about it. Eric is very clearly hurting, but he's so strong and very level-headed. He wants to see a therapist. The maturity my kids are showing makes me proud. They don't deserve this at all. We made the authorities aware of everything. I plan on being completely unforgiving and ruthless in this divorce. I'm reflecting on how I've been treated and how it's made me a shell of myself and how I've had a very negative opinion of myself because of him over the last 20 years. I don't want to let this scumbag get away with it. I want to reinvent myself and move on stronger than ever. Update 2. I've been focusing on and worrying about how others are feeling over this, somewhat ignoring my own feelings which I'm trying to change. I range from anger to numbness like a light switch. We're all safe and still at my brother's house. We're very careful and his house is secured. Paul has tried to call my cell phone several times a day. I'm refusing to interact with him and I will have my lawyer handle all correspondence. He scares me, frankly. My brother has a very secure house with an alarm system and bolted locks. We feel safe with him. Both my son and I got checked out and tested. It appears so far that we're both clean based on the immediate rapid tests, but in the coming days, We'll know for certain when the lab results come in. I'm not overly concerned. Eric is scheduled to see a therapist early next week, which is very good and needed. He's not himself right now. He seems a bit shell-shocked, and I am concerned. He internalizes a lot, and it's hard to get a read on what's going on in his head. That being said, he's thoughtful and has been talking with me, asking me how I'm doing, and everything. He's not interested in corresponding with his dad at all. He calls only my cell phone, and he hasn't tried to reach out to either Eric or Mary. I get the sense that Paul is extremely nervous. He's scared, and I think he deep down knows that if investigated thoroughly, he would be in big trouble. That's what my gut is telling me. I still think about the Zoom call with him, and the more I think about it, the more it looks like he was a man whose entire world was crashing down on him. The panic in his face was very apparent. I offered Mary to make an appointment with a therapist as well, but she doesn't want to see one yet. She said she's open to it eventually, but wants time to herself. She's been asking her friends about her dad, and if they experienced any creepiness from him, her friends were open and honest with her. And apparently, they felt like he stared a lot and sensed his hovering presence whenever they were over. One of Mary's friends went so far as to say that she felt like he was checking her a lot, like looking at her rear and complimenting the color of her yoga pants. At the time, no issue was brought up about it, but in light of everything that has been happening, it seemed strange now. He would sit himself in different areas or vantage points to get a good view of her, she claimed. He also asked questions about what kind of friend group or which clique they were in at school. He kept asking about if they were popular girls. I'm completely embarrassed that they had this experience at our house. As for updates on Emily, which is the main reason why I wanted to write this update, I completely agree that she is also a victim. A lot of people have been emphasizing that, and I agree. I've done everything I could in my own power to indirectly get her opportunities to get help. Like I said, I told her mother, and she's been updating me on everything. Emily, unfortunately, is still living in her deluded reality, and I can only pray that she'll eventually come to her senses. She doesn't want to see any doctors or therapists at all, and has been constantly trying to reach Paul because, again, 
She believes that they are in love. From what I've been told, she hasn't been able to get hold of him, and he's been avoiding communication with her completely. Emily blames me for that and believes I took away his devices and am very controlling. Any truth that her mother tries to convey to her is met with conspiracy theories and hostility. Emily looks at me as a villain and still sees Paul through rose-colored glasses. Her mother showed her screenshots of his dating app profiles and matches, and she refuses to believe it, saying, I photoshopped it. According to her mom, Emily keeps saying things like everyone is just mad because she found herself a real man, and that I'm jealous because she takes better care of him than I do. It's in mind with some of the conversations I screenshot, where a lot of what Paul says is him complaining about things I don't do for him, intimately. Right now, she's insistent that she and Paul will be together in the long run. Completely disgusting. He's honestly a slime ball. I can only hope that Emily comes to her senses, but my directly intervening doesn't feel like it would be productive at the moment. Maybe eventually, though.